Hi, this is Mike back with another Python tutorial for you. Now this time we're going to cover something that um, it might seem a little bit weird for you initially, but you can actually do some incredibly useful things with it. And it's the subject of exceptions. Now exceptions are basically um, a way of causing your program to cr crash in a specific way. Now, why would you want to crash your machine or your software? Um, you wouldn't necessarily want it to crash. What you would want it to do is you want it to signify that it would has caused an error in a specific way. And after this tutorial, hopefully you'll understand why it's important to cause uh, system crashes or cause your, comp your programs to fail in a specific way so that you can catch certain kinds of errors and also pass information back and forth throughout your programs. So, how do we do a basic exception? Well, let's just set up a, a little environment variable, or a little variable rather. And the first step you do with any uh, exception is you have to have a try clause. Now, it works a similar way to an, an, an if statement where you, you type the word try, then you put a colon. The next line down has to be indented one tab or four spaces in from the try. And we're going to say if something is none, raise an exception. Now, Sometimes you get exceptions from doing, making errors, but you can actually create your own exceptions and deliberately cause a crash under certain circumstances. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to deliberately cause a crash um, so that we can show how exceptions work. Now, the most basic kind of exception is the one that comes out of the box from Python itself, and it's just called an exception. And to raise it, you basically use the keyword raise, and then you create a new instance of exception. Exception is actually a class. So you create a new instance with it, and you pass it some string um, to say what the error should be. Because by default, this exception doesn't necessarily know what, it, what it's actually for. And we'll see later why, why that is the case. Um, but for now, we're just going to pass it a string saying some basic exception occurred. The last stage, or rather the, the second last stage, as we'll find out, is to actually catch what happened. So we caused the crash here, but we can actually catch what's happening and stop the crash from completely halting the program. And we do that by saying, exception and then comma e now you may have seen some people have code like this and that's okay too but if you want to actually catch the exception and in the current instance of it and and extract the message of what it's actually sending to you then you'll need to do that comma e part so in our case we're just going to print out e dot message which is the message that we've got from this exception and it should actually be just that string that we passed in so let's run that and see what happens so uh, there we go run that and then you get the message printed out at the bottom some basic exception happened so from that, we can then um, build on the situation. Now, what do we mean by building on that? Well, say we wanted our computer program to crash in a specific way. Um, we could then define our own versions of an exception. And then we can then look for those specific versions of that exception and then react to the different crashes in different ways, depending on what kind of an exception it is. So I'm gonna define two different exceptions here. I've got a hamster exception, and I've got a goat exception. And each one has a different message. So whenever these exceptions take place in our code, the message will be different in the end. 
Now, as you can see, we're currently raising a normal exception and trapping a normal exception. If we extend our exception handling system, we can then extend it slightly by adding another accept in there and this time we're going to do a hamster exception and we're going to call it AG and that's simply to demonstrate that you don't necessarily have to just call that E all the time you can call it whatever you like it's it depends if it clashes with something that's already been named within your code so then we're just going to print the message from that one instead In addition, we're going to also um, try and catch this goat exception. We'll call that GE. Now, notice we've got several different accepts here. And this is where the, the real idea of exception handling comes in because we can crash our programming in several different ways now and it can be handled differently. So for instance, we can crash it with a normal exception here and it will get caught by this line. And if we demonstrate that, I'll just press, oh, wrong button. It says some basic exception happened because that's really what that exception is. However, if we change this to be a hamster exception that we're raising here, this line here will detect that it's this specific kind of exception that it wants to deal with and it will handle this line instead. And we should then see the other message from that exception coming out. So let's just try that. There you go. If we change it to a goat exception, It will bypass this line because it doesn't qualify as a, as a hamster exception. It qualifies as a goat exception. So then it should just print that out. And in fact, let's just uh, take that even further and say there was a exception. Just to prove that we actually did get down to this line and that we didn't go and execute this line instead. So watch as we do that. Okay, so because it's a different kind of exception that we've declared, so it's a different class, it goes down this try accept hierarchy and comes to the kind that matches and then stops here and only executes whatever's in there. Say you've got a situation where you want something to happen after you've found an exception. Regardless of whether the exception was handled or not, you want something to happen. Well, that's where the keyword finally comes in. Because finally we'll make sure that it doesn't matter what exception here is caught, it will run some code finally so let's just say print and we're all done so in the case of this it will come down it will find the goat exception but then after it's handled that it will jump past this exception line here and finally print out and we're all done. So 
let's just execute that. There you go. So this is a way of causing your program to crash in a specific way. A specific way so that you can handle what happens when errors happen. As you can see, this didn't actually completely crash the program. It just basically caused an error situation that the program had to then deal with. If we didn't put this try accept situation in place, then you would get a proper crash. Let's just demonstrate that now. If after all of that stuff, we create a new line and we just basically cause it to raise an exception and it's not being handled because it's not inside of a try accept situation. <clears throat> As you can see, it gives us a trace back and tells us that we've got a goat exception that was unhandled. So <clears throat> basically we can raise exceptions that will crash the system, but if we use try and accept and handle them correctly, it means that you can avoid a complete crash of your system and even allow your program to recover from it. So that's the end of this tutorial on exceptions. So if you enjoyed this and you learned something, then please click the like button. And if you want to know more about the series and learn more about Python, then click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.